Destiny calls me, and I am compelled to answer. Gods, hear my voice. I will bear your blessings to battle. I am ready for the trials ahead. I am the rising dawn. And I will lead us into a new age. Oh, poor Falcon. To be absolutely clear, it will be avenged. Ra demands it. Before we begin, I should say we're showcasing an alpha version of the game, so plenty of things are still being fine-tuned. We were just too excited to show it off. Anyway, our hero, Ramesses, begins his journey to greatness in North Sinai, near the settlement of Nakel. As a trusted and ambitious general to Pharaoh Menepta, tasked at keeping the troublesome Canaanites at bay, Ramesses' dreams of a revitalised Egypt lie well beyond his station. But who doesn't love an underdog? And underdog describes us well. Our stores are looking serviceable, but ideally we'd be self-sufficient. Meanwhile, there's an angry man nearby throwing rocks at birds. We'll want to do something about those yes, resources, but greatness. first things first, vengeance. Ra's blessed us with a natural ridge, so we're going to use it to funnel our attackers into a kill box. In Total War Pharaoh, outmaneuvering your opponent can mean the difference between a decisive victory or a humiliating failure. At the moment, we've got one unit holding the line, whilst the second one moves behind the enemy to attack in their flanks. We'll order our front-facing units to hold the line, keeping our choke point as tight as possible. We'll explore formations in a later video, but each one increases your tactical control over the battlefield. As the press increases, individual fighters break out from the melee to prove their might in duels. The ridge has given us the extra advantage we needed, and Sukkot breaks under a rain of arrows. Yeah, run away. Coward. We'll finish him off in a minute, but first, let's get some royal decrees brewing. Okay, what have we got here then? Unit experience, always nice to have, but a happy population is worth its weight in gold. Longer festivals will make the people happy, and lead to trading outposts which our fragile economy could sorely use. Hmm. We'll also want to pick up increased food production and affinity with the forest. We can't really go wrong by prioritising these four to begin with, so we'll explore the food route for now and scoop up the others as we go. We've started our sure-to-be legendary voyage into the field of reeds with two out of four of the settlements found in North Sinai. We only need Azuti and Sukkot to complete the set, but before we do, let's explore a traditional Egyptian pastime, building impressive things. Looks like our workforce is idling away in the blistering sun. Sorry friends, time to get to work. In the lands of Egypt and beyond, the workforce is a currency to always keep in mind. We'll need labourers to build our settlements, same as any other resource. For now, we'll construct a winery for the boons to happiness, resource production and workforce growth. We'll also build a water well, again, mostly for the workforce growth. It's around 1200 BCE, and at this point in history, trade up and down the Mediterranean coast was bustling, if not mysteriously slowing down. Dreams of a trade empire are nice to have, but let's start Good small. Our immediate neighbours are willing to part with their hard-earned goods, and like any true would-be pharaoh, I'm only too eager to oblige them. Pyramuses quite likes us, so we'll get some trade going with them shortly. Elsewhere, Seti would also be a worthwhile ally to pursue. It's not much, but we can spare to part with some wood in exchange for stone to get the heavy ball of diplomacy rolling. He's more than happy with 55, so let's be cheeky and see what we can squeeze him for. 68? Nope. Bridge too far. 66? Hmm. 65? Ah, there we go. Nice. Minor trades, all well and good, but if we want to expand, we'll need to become self-sufficient. Who's hoarding the goods? Timna has bronze, but I don't want to open us up to a war on two fronts so quickly. We'll do away with Sukkot first, then look at expanding west. 
for glory! I have earned this city. Lump! Soldiers, move! This is part of a new empire. There we go. Norse and I liberated and our little feathery friend well and truly avenged. With Zakot and Azeti under our very caring thumbs, we've acquired a new building, Fishing Grounds. We've got two, which translates to a very nice influx of food, and food is something we'll want to be wary of. As we build our legacy, we'll want to take note of the passing seasons. Aket, the flood season, sees great yield in our fisheries and further movement at sea. Horet, the growth season, is the ideal time to bolster our forces. Shemu, the harvest season, is when we see bountiful yields for our farms and increased replenishment for our armies. Shemsu Ho is the end of the year and comes with boons that we'll want to take advantage of further down the road. The ebb and flow of nature can decide the fate of Egypt as potently as any man and should always be respected. Apart from the ocean, Sukkot's borders are fairly safe, and I mean, who's going to attack us from the sea? No, Azati's neighbours are of the rougher persuasion, so we'll look at building our fences just a little bit higher and install a nifty keep out sign. That should do the trick. Neither Ashkelon nor Bathsheba are particularly fond of Ramesses' expansive efforts, so I'm tempted to rush our upgrade along just in case. Oof, maybe not. We're too poor. Either way, we don't yet have a steady income of gold, so spending what we can't replenish is just asking for attrition. Let's leave it for now, and keep a close eye on the Canaanites in the meanwhile. Our more falcon-eyed viewers may have noticed that we've not been recruiting any additional soldiers just yet. It's unorthodox, but we've been managing to get away with it because of Ramesses himself. Ramesses is fast and far-seeing, his soldiers elite and loyal, making him the perfect run-and-gun hero. Because of this, we're not too worried about the edges of our expanding empire, knowing Ramesses can cover such large there? swaths of ground with ease. That means we can hold off constructing our military buildings until we've got a better foundation under us. Speaking of the military, we've delivered plenty of souls to Duat, ready for Anubis's judgement, and are all the wiser and stronger for it. We're getting a name for ourselves amongst our subjects, but it's up to us to mould Ramesses into the pharaoh we want him to be. Will he have presence, reducing the upkeep of his army? Will he have fortitude, ensuring his soldiers are always fighting fit? Or will he have ardour, ever pushing himself and his men to go further, faster? How we shape Ramesses unlocks titles with various boons. The higher our rank, the more slots are unlocked for a total of four concurrent titles at any one time. We already have enough competencies to apply the Shield of the Mege title, which will increase the defence of our Mege units amongst other effects. Going forward, we'll try to work towards love by the people for the added stability to the realm and merciless in his strides for the massive boon to campaign movement. Alrighty, let's become a bronze mogul. Sorry Timna, but I want your stuff. You may have been wondering what these little chaps are. To survive in the expansive and often volatile Egyptian terrain, we'll need to employ the use of outposts. These are structures like any other that armies can interact with to gain specific boons depending on what we choose to build. They also grant a positive, passive effect in the province, but can be costly and are often targeted by invading armies. Military outposts offer anything from replenishment to increase siege holdout for local armies and settlements. Administrative outposts can make us immune to desert attrition or increase our legitimacy. Economic outposts can bolster our resources produced in the outpost region. And finally, religious outposts relate to our chosen deity, but we'll talk about that in another video. Most outposts require technologies to unlock, and we're working towards the economic outpost at the moment. Should only be another 8 turns or so. For now, we've constructed an Egyptian fort close to our border with Hetch, giving us additional security in the region and a strategic fallback point if things don't go too well. of a new empire.
Beyond compare. Putting on what is. Hold on, let's pause there for a second. Hetch is a walled settlement, so we'll need a little more planning before the stabbing can commence. After all, we can't expect our men to charge at walls without at least building some ladders first. Unfortunately, in the Bronze Age, pockets aren't quite deep enough to successfully conceal siege equipment, so if we want to climb some walls, we'll need to prepare. Let's start our siege and get some ladders and a battering ram brewing. For what you have improved your fighting for, I can tell. Then you agree with me. Witness, gods! Arrows away! Oh, now might be a good time to use my fire arrows. I don't really want to have to rebuild the city. Let's not use fire arrows. Yet. The sandstorm's blown in, rendering all archers less effective. It seems Hetch's fate will be decided in the melee. Sinai is ours. Our empire is growing nicely, and we're producing our own wood, food, stone, and bronze. Gold is still a bit of an issue, but now we've got other resources coming in, we can embark on some more ambitious trading. For Pharaohs, I look forward to our talks. Dipping our toes into Wall Street's all well and good, but it's still better an to be self-sufficient. Hello, friends. Thanks to our royal decree, we've unlocked camp trading posts. We'll build one in North Sinai and another in Sinai, giving us a healthy boost to our resource productivity. But no leaders ever moaned about having too strong an economy, so we'll head towards Stone Shapers next. We've already dipped our toes into recruitment, but it's probably time to expand our army. A few more archers are always helpful, and the Habaru Militia are nice all-rounders. Plus, they have Vanguard deployment, which opens us up to some fun tactical shenanigans. That's the technical term, FYI. We've been a little heavy-handed in Sinai, and our new subjects aren't overjoyed. To avoid a rebellion, we'll organise some festivities. When folks have cheered up a little, we'll hire some smelting apprentices for the boon to our bronze stores. We're fairly secure west of Nikel. I'm not anticipating a betrayal from my Egyptian friends, and, as we all know, whatever's lurking in the fog of war can't hurt you if you can't see it. Back east, though, and Bathsheba's looking ripe for plundering. Attitudes towards Ramesses are bad, but they're Canaanite, so there's no reason to salvage the relationship. And they have gold, so I'm going to take their land. Ramesses! Hmm, Thor's protecting its treasures greedily. We'll need to break our invasion down into bite-sized chunks. Too risky. We'll take down the standing Great army and the military fort first, then take the garrison. Down. and outgunned, our first victories come easy. With only Hathor's garrison to contend with, we'll begin building our siege engines. Ah, okay. They'd rather face us in the field. Fine. Let's do it. We're evenly matched, but I've hidden my Havaru units around their flanks. Our surprise was spotted, so we'll be a little late to the party. Unfortunately, it's meant the bulk of our armies a bit overwhelmed. Here they come, better late than never. Oh, whoops, our line discipline hasn't been quite up to scratch and Ramesses is staring down some axemen. Best get running, lad. The night was hard, but dawn brings victory, and Hathor's defenders retreat behind their walls, foolishly thinking themselves safe. We 
We've been forging our own path until now, but Egypt has fallen into unrest and civil war looms. In the chaos, Ramesses could achieve all his ambitions. To solidify our claim to the throne, we'll first need to occupy sacred Egyptian land. It would appear our empire is in need of expanding further still. This war is part of my legend. Victory is my destiny. Egypt deserves a new dynasty.